Hello friends, in this video we will talk about multiplicative inverse and its python implementation. So let's start. So first we will understand the definition of multiplicative inverse. So multiplicative inverse of a mode n is a bar such that a into a bar is congruent to one mode n. So that means instead of x we are searching for a bar such that if we perform this multiplication then this multiplication will be congruent to one mode n. So let's try to analyze uh, whether uh, what are the inverses multiplicative inverses of this values. So let's say I want to find out inverse of 2 then I, I will be looking at reminder 1 value. So multiplicative inverse of 2 will be nothing but 3 because 2 into 3 is nothing but 6, 6 mode 5 is 1 right. Similarly multiplicative inverse of 3 will be nothing but 2 because the remainder is 1 I am, I, I am interested in remainder 1 value and corresponding x value which is nothing but a bar in this particular case is nothing but 2 right. So multi, uh, multiplicative inverse of 3 is 2. Similarly multiplicative inverse of 4 is itself because the corresponding remainder 1 is present here and if we talk about multiplicative inverse of 1 then it is again itself. So here we are getting multiplicative inverse for all these values 1, 2, 3, 4. But if we check with respect to modulo 4 then we will not be able to get multiplicative inverse for 2 because there is no remainder 1 in this particular row. Right? So there is no multiplicative inverse for 2. Now this idea of multiplicative inverse uh, with respect to modulo operation is uh, quite similar to our traditional idea of multiplicative inverse. For example, uh, if, we, if we want to find out multiplicative inverse of 5 then straight away we will multiply 5 with 1 upon 5 and we are doing this because our objective is to get the identity multiplicative identity which is nothing but 1. Similarly here what we are going to do we are going to multiply a with a bar such that after performing modulo n on this value which is nothing but a into a bar we get 1 as our final answer right. So the idea is quite uh, similar. Now why we are doing this because our uh, ultimate objective is given values of a, b and n we want to find out x such that x is congruent to b by a mode n if you remember from the previous tutorial right. So this is nothing but rule of x. And this can happen only if we can perform this b by a operation. So now if we simplify this further then we can say that b by a is nothing but it is congruent to b into a bar. So that means if multiplicative inverse exists with respect to a then only we will be able to perform this division right. So that is the idea. So that is why this, this is very important right. And if we simplify this further let us say for any b if we perform these two operations let us say division by a and then multiplication by a then let us see what happens. So then we'll, we are per actually performing this right we are multiplying with a also and if we simplify this then we can apply associative rule right and so we will get a bar into a mode n right and since a bar into a is uh, congruent to 1 mode n, we will finally get b mode n here, right. So the motivation is we want to achieve this, we want to find out x, in order to find out x this division operation is required and this division operation is ultimately translate to this multiplicative inverse, multiplication with multiplicative inverse of a, right, so that is the idea. Okay, so the, the next property of multiplicative inverse is if A has a multiplicative inverse then it must be unique. So let us prove this particular property. So let us assume that instead of one multiplicative inverse A has two multiplicative inverses and let us say those two in multiplicative inverses are P and Q respectively. So now if we uh, talk about P mode N then we can replace this with P into one mode N. Right. both of this will give same answer and now this one we can replace this one with a times q this is because q is multiplicative 
uh, inverse of a right and if we simplify this further then again we can apply associative law here so by uh, since mul uh, multiplication is associative we can simplify like this p into a times q mod n and since p is multiplicative inverse of a we can write down this is equivalent to 1 into q mod n and finally we are saying this is q mod n so we have shown that p mod n is equal to q mod n so in other words we have just shown that p is equal to q so therefore the multiplicative inverse is unique now we will prove the most important result with respect to this tutorial the result says a has a multiplicative inverse modulo n if and only if gcd of a comma n is equal to 1 so before we prove this let's uh, try to analyze this so uh, if we consider this particular example then if you consider gcd of uh, 1 comma 5 gcd of 2 comma 5 gcd of 3 comma 5 gcd of 4 comma 5 all of this is nothing but 1 and we are getting multiplicative inverse for all of them right this numbers 1 2 3 4 Whereas, if we consider GCD of 2 comma 4, then the answer is not equal to 1, it is 2, right. So, and in this particular case, we are not able to generate uh, multiplicative inverse for 2, right. So, now, uh, so, so this makes sense, right? with respect to our examples, this theorem is consistent. Now, now let us uh, prove this particular theorem. So, let me rewrite this uh, theorem in other words. So, theorem says, a, a has a multiplicative inverse modulo n. So, that means, let us say the multiplicative inverse is nothing but x with respect to a, then I can write like this, a x, a times x must be congruent to 1 mod n. Why? Because x is multiplicative inverse of a. So, therefore, after performing this multiplication and then modulo n operation, the remainder must be 1, right. So, this is nothing but equivalent representation of first part and after uh, if this is two if and only if gcd of a comma n is equal to one so essentially we are interested in proving this so if we simplify this left hand side then we will get like this a x minus one is multiple of n so let us say n times some value which is nothing but k1 and if we simplify this further then we can write like this is equal to 1 a x minus n k 1 is equal to 1 and I am just replacing this variable k 1 with k 2 and this is my final equation now with respect to part 1 ok. If we talk about equation of type this a x plus b y is equal to c and if we talk about integer solutions like x comma y uh, integers x and y such that this particular uh, equation has solution. then we know uh, that this Diffantine equation has a solution if and only if GCD of A comma B divides C, right. So, if you, if you do not uh, remember this particular result, then you can watch my video related to this Diffantine equation, right. So, Diffantine equation a x plus b y is, is in the form of a x plus b y is equal to c and it is solvable if and only if g c d of a comma b divide c. Now, we will ap apply this particular result here. So, here instead of uh, a and b, so here uh, ok, so in our case this three values are given a, b and n. So, my constants are a and n, these two values are given and we want to uh, find out this variables x and k, k2 right so we can say that this equation has solution if and only if gcd of a comma n divides one and this is possible if and only if gcd of a comma n is equal to one so this is nothing but proof of this theorem so this if gcd of a comma n is equal to one then only we will be able to find out multiplicative inverse modulo n for a right. So, now with this we are ready to uh, write down our algorithm which can generate value of x given 
for the given values of b, a and n, right. So, we are interested in finding out value of x and now we will write down the procedure which can generate its value, okay. So, the very first thing is GCD of a comma n must be equal to 1, then only we will be able to find out such x, right. Now, from the extended uh, Euclid algorithm, right, so this is our first step now. So, this is uh, required for verification, right. So, if this is false, then there is no need to proceed further, right. If GCD of a comma n is not equal to 1, then you won't be able to find out such x, okay. So, if GCD of a comma n is equal to 1, then from the extended Euclid algorithm, we can write down a and n as a s plus n t is equal to 1. So, this is nothing but linear combination of a and n and we will get these two values as certificate, right. So, if you remember from x, uh, this is from extended Euclid algorithm. So, from extended Euclid algorithm, we will be able to write down a and n as linear combination like this and my claim is so, we will get this values S and T from extended Euclid algorithm and my claim is S is nothing but multiplicative inverse of A. So, now let us prove it. So, now I can write A S is nothing but 1 minus N T and if I talk about A times S mode N then I must get 1, then only I can say that this S is multiplicative inverse of A, right. And if we do this, then basically we are performing 1 minus NT mode N and this is nothing but 1. So, therefore, we can say that S is nothing but multiplicative inverse of A, okay. So, now uh, we are interested in finding out nothing but value of x. So, what is x? If we if we uh, recall, then if we, if we simplify this further, then x is nothing but b into a bar. a bar is nothing but multiplicative inverse of a mode n. So, we want to return this particular value. So, instead of a bar, uh, our uh, value is nothing but s. So, we will write, write down like this b times s mode n, okay. So, it may be possible that uh, after performing this extended Euclid algorithm, this value of s is negative. So, in that particular case, we will just add n in it so that we can get the positive answer. So, this will do if s is less than 0, right. And finally, we will return value of x. So, what is x? x is nothing but b times s mode n. So, value of b is given, value of n is given, s we have generated from extended Euclid algorithm and we will be able to generate this final answer x. So, now let me uh, take some values, value of a is 3, value of uh, b is let us say 4, okay, and n is equal to 5. So, we want to, uh, and again GCD of first thing is GCD of 3 comma 5 is 1. So, we will be able to generate uh, this x such that uh, this this is correct b times s mode n is nothing but x, okay. So, now what we will do? We will first write down 3 and 5 as linear combination. We will write down 1 as linear combination of 3 and 5. So, basically 3 times 2 plus 5 times minus 1 is nothing but 1, right. So, here this s is nothing but 2, right, because this is 2 is nothing but multiplicative inverse of 3 here, right. So, now we will be able to generate x. So, x is here in this particular case s is positive itself. So, we do not need to add anything and our final answer is nothing but s times if you see this particular equation then s times b okay and what is the value of b b is nothing but 4 right in this particular case so s times b mode n this is the equation and we are going to substitute this value 2 times 4 mode n which is nothing but 
5. So, we will get 8 mode 5 which is nothing but 3. So, this is nothing but 3. So, let us uh, verify. Uh, so, okay. So, it is like this a times x is congruent to b mode n. So, in this particular case a is equal to 3 x we have found it is nothing but 3. So, 9, 9 mode n, n is nothing but in this particular case 5. So, 9 mode 5 is nothing but 4 which is nothing but value of p. So, this is correct. So, now we will talk about python implementation. So, as you can see in the main function is this divide function and three parameter values are passed a, b and n. So, the very first thing which we need to do is we need to check whether gcd of a comma n is equal to 1 or not. So, for that particular purpose this uh, function is written over here right. So, if gcd of a comma n is equal to 1 then only we will proceed and we will find out multiplicative inverse of a and we will store the multiplicative inverse of a in variable s. So, depending upon whether n is greater than a or a is greater than n we will co either call extended gcd n comma a or extended gcd a comma n. So, this is the code for extended gcd function and if a s is less than 0 then we will add n into it and finally, we will return x, x is nothing but s times b mode n and let us verify whether this particular function is working properly or not. So, if we call divide 2 comma 7 comma 9 then we are getting 8 as the answer. So, let us verify. So, basically 2 into 8 is nothing but 16 and if we take 16 modulo 9 then actually we are getting 7 as the answer. So, that means this is correct and we are not going to discuss this code in detail right because this we have already discussed in earlier tutorials. Thank you. Subscribe to my channel for more videos.